an artist is sort of an identity and a perspective on how you see the world, how you see yourself. to Toronto I was studying urban planning at Ryerson I was gonna be like a social justice <laughs> environmental planner I mean I worked for a few years and for a few different nonprofits in Toronto and I loved it and also it was really hard really demanding emotionally I felt all the work we were doing was just kind of not really getting attention at City Hall and City Council and we continued to get, you know, funding cut and it was really hard on me. I mean, I loved the work and I still do, but I just felt nothing was advancing, nothing was moving. So I had, I still had my flower shop job. I kind of never let them go. I always found a way to move to a different shop, but I always continued to keep that in the back of my pocket. It was kind of a, a thing I just couldn't let go of. And the flower shop I was working for at the time, just part-time had asked me if I wanted to go full-time. And so I sort of left my nonprofit job and went back into a full-time floral role. I loved it. We were at that company for a bit. It was time for me to just find my own path in the floral world. It was something that was starting to really make sense that like, no, this is, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm good at. This is what I love. I can make a career out of it that I can see. I found the perfect way that I couldn't insert myself in what I wanted to do. So I just kind of went for it and started White Oak. And at the beginning it was slow as it always is. And then picked up like crazy. There's a ton of support from friends and family and industry people who I've known for years who really helped me in the beginning to kind of get my foot in the door. And we continued to work together. And I sort of started my business at the same time that friends and acquaintances of my age are all getting married. So it became a really good way to, to kind of get the business going. Getting the studio in Toronto was sort of a big move, but to be honest, it's just sort of worked out to make way more sense for my home life and the business. Doing this out of my house for the last five years, not easy, really, really hard. Sort of working all over the place. It got to a point where it was just, this is no way to live. I'm not enjoying my home. I'm not enjoying my work because it's just way too intertwined. So, I mean, the studio is great. It's in a perfect location, easy to get to. And it just makes a lot more sense for the business to have its roots in Toronto. It's where we started. When I first moved up to Innisfil, it was a really big adjustment for the business. It was, you know, really far to bring flowers back and forth to the city where all my jobs were happening. But I love living up here. That's something that I don't want to change, especially not having the studio here now. It really is just my safe little piece that I get to keep. I love being outside, especially since we moved up here. I loved it in Toronto too, but I don't know, it's something different about the country. Everything is dialed down. There's this soft energy that lives in the woods. And honestly, I go there when I need a break.
part of the reason that I even started my own business was that I did see things differently and I really wanted to be able to go after that and sometimes when you're working for other people you're within their brand and their umbrella which I still do love and respect everybody that I've worked for but I just wanted to do something different for myself and it's evolved I feel like my style has moved up and down and in and out and I love that and I hope that it keeps changing but I think for me I just reinvent my own style year after year and I think that it's always sort of changing I think there are some rules in floristry that are sort of passed down through different florist generations. And I've said this before, and it's so important for people to know the rules and then know when to break them because I think that's when magic happens, especially with certain color palettes. People are like, oh, those two colors don't go together in theory. But when I see them or I see different versions of them and they work so well and it's so unexpected, I just, I love that. And color has always been my strength in my floristry. One of my mentors, John, told me when I was young, he said, you're a colorist. You see color really uniquely, really special. The way that you put palettes together, like I would, wouldn't do that myself, but it works so well. So I honestly don't know what it is. I, I see it in nature too. Just the way that palettes are built on the most minute detail of variation in tones and for me, piecing those strange palettes together is everything. If I can make it work and it stands out and somebody hasn't seen that combination before, I feel like on cloud nine. <laughs> I think the seasons and where we live, we are so, so lucky. There's places where they don't get the range and the variation that we do. I personally love the different moods that happen. And I always try and push clients to see what's happening around and try and bring it in as much as possible because it's incredible. And it's really just a representation of the perfect landscape at that time. And so I try and incorporate it. I feel like when clients are really on board with keeping the seasons in check and making sure that they check back to that over and over, it really helps to set and it looks appropriate and timeless. And for years and years, when they see certain things in the fall or the spring, it'll remind them of their wedding. And I think that those kind of memories, they don't go away. People lock in, they remember these smells or feelings and it stays with them. Forging is the act of gathering from the land and using it. Lots of people forge food. There's all sorts of little herbs and wild garlic and wild onions, mushrooms that people forge and incorporate into cooking. We forge and use it into our work all the time, especially for me. With seasonality and the landscapes, you really have to take what's growing outside to complete that whole palette and complete the cycle. We order our flowers and we get them in, but you can't mimic those kind of change in seasons by importing flowers. And for me too, a huge part of my installation work and bigger pieces is all about scale and you can't ship a 10 foot branch anywhere. So you really do have to 
be resourceful and use what's going on around you. My favorite place to forge is the side of the road ditches because those areas have incredible things, mostly from the runoff from the roads mixed in. It sort of creates this swampy little ditch where amazing things grow. But I forge a lot in the ditch and mostly because the cities come by and mow them down anyway. So might as well, I cut them and use them for people to enjoy. And living up in the country, we see so much of it and it's overflowing, it's everywhere. There's just random roads with just smoke bush and amazing, amazing stuff growing that really, really, really tie a whole palette and a whole thing together. So for smoke bush, things like that, it's amazing to forage. You gotta find those good little spots and I just keep them logged and I go back year after year and yeah. So mock-ups are so important, especially for particular clients and large weddings. It really helps the bride and the planner and myself really understand what is working, what isn't working, what do we need to improve on to reach a better space. And I feel like working with couples, it's complicated and amazing. This is their wedding. It can be really overwhelming. Expectations are high. And so I really, really, really push to do a mock-up for specific weddings because I think it's important for people to know what they like, what they don't like, what they can expect on their wedding. And at the end of the day, I really want my couples to love it. I want them to be happy. I want them to just be over the moon about it. And so the mock-ups give us the time and it's sort of like training wheels. Let's make sure that we're safe before we take these off and go for it completely. So they're really important for what they can expect moving forward. So market and flower ordering and the whole hustle, the week of hustle, I call it. I love it. It's intense and I feel like I'm running on adrenaline the whole time. I'm gathering my orders and pulling my pieces. I always like to leave some budget for special things that just show up or things that I didn't think of that really look good together when I'm there. And I'm such a visual person, especially with the colors. I want to see it all out together before I leave there. It's really important just to connect it while you're there. Going to places like linen fabric stores, I think that's where florists take it to the next level. We're not only gathering fresh product, we're gathering vessels and candles and linens and we really are connecting all of these pieces that you don't really think of when you think of what a florist does. So you have a whole bunch of different materials and a lot of them aren't even flowers. A lot of it's just mechanics and prep stuff too. Probably one of my favorite parts of the job is when I go and get all of the little pieces and everything really starts coming together quickly at that point. And that really doesn't happen until the week of. So everything beforehand is just like ordered and emailing and online. And so it's full physical work this whole week of and it's great. I love design work anywhere, especially when I'm working with the clients. I'm like, what is the stationery? What is the paper? What is this and that? I really like to see it all together. So when somebody asks if I can take care of a certain aspect of that, I'm definitely on board. With this wedding, it's really small and sweet and 
The flags are a nice little touch that connects the ribbon we're using for the flower girls and the walkway we're using for the aisle and we connected it. I love that when pieces really all flow together and I think it's important for design. The small weddings that we started doing, they reignited my flame for weddings because it is hard when you're doing them all the time, these really, really big ones. They take a lot out of you leading up to it on the day of and after. So when these little ones started popping up, it just really got me excited again. It was like, they're totally manageable. A lot of the time the couples are just really easygoing and kind of let you just roll with it. And specifically the people who are just getting married because they just want to be married regardless of COVID, that they're doing it at home, on their front lawn, in their backyard, in the park, to be able to build stuff that's going to be there when they're making those promises is really special. Everybody loves an outdoor wedding. They're casual, they're relaxed, they're easy, and they're fun. Shell and Zach's wedding was supposed to be a really big, glamorous event at a very different venue with 300 people or so. And now we're under 50 at their family cottage on tiny beaches, which is so different than the original plan. This is a couple who just want to be married and they don't want to wait a year and they're going to make it work regardless. I love that. So we moved the date up from September till August 15th and this vibe is really light and airy and interesting and really frothy. The bride really likes clean but interesting things. So we're incorporating gypsophilia, which is baby's breath with smoke bush that we forged and bringing in pops of orange and pops of peach here and there just to kind of balance it out. And on the water with the sun setting, it's such an amazing place to get married. And I'm so happy that they took this route instead of waiting and postponing. So really happy. My mom and oldest sister both work for White Oak. My mom is a retired wedding planner and an incredible creative woman. And she started doing weddings and I was young and I would go with her. And it's so funny that now it's sort of turned and now she works for me, but she's really creative and amazing with design and stuff like that. So she takes care of all of our inventory, rental, candle, that kind of thing. And she's really, really good on the day designing and setting up tables. My sister Natasha is incredible, such a hard worker. She's just down for anything. We'll go in a ditch and cut down a tree if she needs to. And we'll also carry million boxes up 30 flights of stairs. We come from a family of really strong, hardworking women and when we're together, it's unstoppable. It's really hard to find good help. And I feel like when you work with your family and you trust your family, like, you know, they love and admire you and they just will work until the end to make sure that it's perfect and it's the way you want. And I feel like you don't always get that when you hire outsiders, but they're hilarious. They're a duo. They love working together. I love working with them and nice to just be together again working. Good 
Sometimes when I have a day or something to myself, I want to make something for me. And you know, it's so funny. I haven't done this in a long time because with weddings every week, I never have any energy to. And even if there are beautiful leftover flowers and I'm using them all for the wedding, I'm exhausted. And so this whole COVID every week, I've been making something for myself, which I haven't done since I first started my business. So to be able to just take some time and say, this doesn't matter. Nobody's buying it. Nobody's paying for it. There's no expectation. And I feel like that is when really cool things can happen because I'm not concerned. Nobody's in my head. I'm just free to do what I want, make the weirdest, strangest alien looking thing. And maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe it does, but it's also just the practice. I think as an artist, you have to continue to practice. You have to continue to learn. You have to try things that are weird and strange and maybe they're ugly, but you know, maybe it'll help you bridge into a new idea that work on it enough and, and you get something to do something for yourself, I think is what keeps the fire alive in this business. If you're always making things for other people, you lose that thing. And I don't want to lose that thing. artist is sort of an identity and a perspective on how you see the world, how you see yourself. It's also the ability to take materials of any sort and transform them into something that wasn't there before. And I think that is art, being in that zone and creating and building something from scratch. And it's beautiful. That's why I've been doing it for so long, because it's just, it's in me. I am an artist. And when I meet another artist, it feels like we're connected in a way because we both have this vocation to create and to share it and spread it. If I build something and it makes somebody feel something, I think that's incredible. I just want people to feel something and I want to feel something. So that's art to me. Mm -hmm. 